And uh, because I think one of the issues <laughs> that probably change is the value system as far as from a Christian perspective, it is that there's chastity, that we will remain celibate until we get married. And in a, in a more secular uh, perspective, it is we will explore <laughs> each other's company. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and see, so she probably said you cut off for a while and you're like, I don't know if I'm, I'm going there. Well, okay, okay. I, I was cut off. I'm not going to lie. But I, I was cut off. I was cut off. I was cut off. But like at the time when I was cut off, and, like... And that didn't feel too was, good. No, it didn't feel too good, right? But I was, uh, I was young. So it's yeah, like, yeah. it didn't really... It wasn't like... It's not like... It's different. Like at the yeah. point I was young, so it's like sex didn't really define anything for me at that point. So yeah. Even though I was cut off, I was still willing to like accept it, right? Yeah. But... I hear what you're saying. A lot of guys would back off at the point of being cut off because in non-Christian relationships, it's like sex has become a part of it. Sure. So it's become a part of intimacy. It's become a part of the actual love of the relationship. So it's that it's that it's that milestone along with everything else that you have to reach. But I don't think that like speaking like me back in the day, I still don't think that would have defined me leaving. Like I was still willing to stay out at the point. I was still willing to stay, I was still willing to make it work, but she was kind of just like, no, I'm, I'm this now, and I'm looking for a guy that's also on that same page. Yeah. And if you're not on that same page with me, faithful-wise, then it's like, we can't mesh. So I, it's accepting. I, I, think, I think, and this is a good point for the barrister to come in and, and start to wade in on this one as well. Uh, when you look at Priscilla, uh, the whole conversation of, you know, uh, being... Uh, involved and engaged in a physical relationship outside of marriage, um, that can actually create a lot of, of tension in, in relationship and getting to know each other. Because it's actually been a proven fact that most men will not in any way feel that they are joined to a woman until they say, I do. And most women, they'll betroth themselves to a man even before they say, I do. So part of the value system here is Am I going to go against what the Bible says, not being unequally yoked, or am I going to go with what my faith says and even take a stand that might be a, a little bit unpopular? Why don't you jump in on that? Um, so I was just thinking of two things. Um, the first in looking at like you know, the physical relationship and what a physical, physical relationship would look like. Um, I know from my personal experience, it's very difficult um, uh, to be in a relationship with someone and who's not a Christian and to have that person understand. Why is that? I think in the past, before I really um, had a great relationship with Christ, before I really knew who he was, I was a Christian. I went to church, but I didn't really have that intimacy with him. So when I was in that situation, I was more able, or it was, I was able to be in relationships where I could, you know, engage with someone physically and, you know, he was not a Christian. I was a Christian, self-proclaimed Christian, but because I wasn't at that level spiritually, it was okay, it was fine. But as I'm um, building more of an intimacy with um, Christ, I'm noticing that that is no longer the case. I cannot um, be in that relationship with someone who's not Christian. I think from my experience, it's, it's if you're um, with a Christian, then and you guys both understand that you know you're supposed to be in a, in a relationship that's pure until you're um, until you get to that that marriage stage. Then then it, it works best, I guess, just with the relationship. I think it's important that we say that because uh, you know when we're we're going back and forth because you guys are getting some information on this too. I mean, it's just like coming out of the male cave and actually going into the woman's washroom. I mean, they have more <laughs> conversations in that washroom than anywhere else. I think that the reality is this: what you're saying. And uh, I'd like to hear the men on this as well. Because uh, the men, uh, uh, from, from your perspective, uh, especially when we're talking about uh, sex and uh, outside of marriage, it's, it's a, a taboo for a Christian perspective. But a man wants to know what's under the hood. He wants to understand, you know, is this something that I can actually go the distance with? Come on, men, shake your head if, you, if, I'm, if I'm telling you to, right? Because that's exactly what she said. She's, mm -hmm. she's saying that uh, the reason why there is a problem is because on one hand, uh, God has made me perfect and I'm made in his image and his likeness. And no matter where I go and what I do, I'll age, but I'm still perfect. 
But a man is like, well, I don't know if it's perfect for me. I got to test it out. Right. Well, coming from a non-Christian and non-religious perspective, part of a relationship involves um, progression. And sex is, uh, from my perspective, a natural, natural progression of that relationship. So it's like exercise. It's like exercise. You have to build up to something bigger and better. And so to your point, um, it, from my perspective, it's not to see what's under the hood. It's almost um, you're, you're preventing from what should naturally happen or what you naturally feel in the relationship. Okay. So you're, you're, you're saying I'm being, I'm being restricted. There is no, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say like restricted, but I perfectly agree with what he says. I think it's like when you get in a relationship, there are certain steps. It's like, okay, let me get to know your personality. Okay, I like that. Okay, let me get to know, let's say, your family. I like that. Okay, let me, let me spend some time with you and get to know your interests and see if we can collide interests. You have the same interests. I like that. Or let me get to know your goals, your ambition, like that. And then it's like, okay, we've reached that point of intimacy. Mm -hmm. Let me get to that step. I don't think it's necessarily something that has to do with like sport or like, I gotta get under the hood. I gotta test every part of you before I commit. I think it's just it's just natural because once you have sex once, it's like every step after that it becomes kind of like common nature. It's like okay, we get to that point in a relationship, let's do it. And I think sex even brings you closer. Like it brings you much more closer together as well. So. All right. Well, from another male perspective, why don't, why don't we? Uh... I think. Sex is actually the closest thing in the Bible there is to marriage itself. Like, there was no really ceremonies and stuff. So by the time you actually had sex, that was it. It sealed the deal. And so, but I do think that like non-Christians or however, however you want to put it, they have it right in some regards in that they, uh, they get to know a lot more about the other person. I've seen a lot of people, some of my close friends who got married because they're like, oh, it's all good. They went to movies, they did all that stuff. They only saw the person in the one context and then they get married and they're like, who is this person? And so while you don't need to necessarily experience everything, I think just going to movies and doing all that stuff is not gonna cut it. It doesn't work because you, you can fake it for a whole year doing that, going to dinners and all this stuff, but you don't really see the person when they're mad. You don't see the person in different settings and sex might be one of those settings that they're getting into. I'm not saying that I would, so, I would do that. So you're saying, let me, let me make sure, I, I want to make sure we hear it. Are you saying I've dropped my face so I can get a peek under the hood? No, no, not that you need to get a peek under the hood, but I do think that you need to learn more about the person than most Christians are willing to do. Now, the, the, like Justin, because he said that's a natural progression. I think most said the same thing. And I'm, I'm hearing a strong in favor of this, that once I keep moving along like that, it's a natural progression that I get a little touch, I get a little rub. Now yeah, we, we're moving start. no further. Huh? It's going to start like a touch or rub, but it's going to begin. And plus, like if you're, if you're with somebody for, let's say, a couple of months, say a couple of years, and you guys aren't having sex, it's going to create like a certain type of irritation or frustration that might break you guys up anyways because it's like it's that thing it's that elephant in the room it's like it's gotta it's gotta happen well, it's gotta happen let's, let's hear from 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 juliet i think you you have uh, uh had some very interesting things and you talk about courtship uh yes. what you look at in the boundaries of courtship as well and really what that means because from a christian perspective what courtship is is and it, and it comes directly out of of the relationship with christ and his church as well and what it talks about, I go away to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would not tell you so. And when he goes to prepare a place, until everything has been prepared and put in place by the Father, by the Father's, at, at, at his acceptable standard, the son cannot come back and get a bride. And it's very interesting because from a Judeo-Christian perspective, that's really what we're looking at uh, from a biblical standpoint. Talk to me about courtship now. Well, it addresses both what this Justin said and, and that Justin. Because Justin, you had mentioned that um, that you know people get married, Christians get married, and they're surprised at who this person they're married to because they didn't know them, they didn't get that that knowledge or that intimacy. Mm -hmm. So they didn't they they find themselves almost as strangers. And then Justin, you had mentioned that sex is the natural progression, it's like the next step, both you and Mo, you said it's the next step. After you get to know, know someone so well in all other areas of their lives, it seems natural to, to make the relationship physical. And so this is in the context of dating, but what you, what you both have mentioned actually uh, occurs um, within courtship the way God intended. So sex is the natural progression of the relationship 
in a courtship because you go from courting to marriage and so you should be having sex after a certain period of time and that's probably the period of time you're talking about you know you've known somebody for a year now it's time to have sex well now it's time to get married and have sex so you're right mm. um, that is the natural progression and should take place and if you're courting rather than dating what we've been talking about you, you get that intimacy you get to know them emotionally, you get to know them like all their their values definitely, and you get to know um, their their dreams, their desires, everything uh, about them. Uh, in a courtship, um, when you visit them, you know where they work and where they live, um, as well as in their other relationships. So you see them with their friends, you see them with their families, then you get to know them well. Mm -hmm. As as you as a matter of fact, a courtship is the beginning of marriage. So you actually behave and you and you treat each other as you would if you were married. Mm -hmm. So um, I find it very interesting because, you know, what, what, from women, and I need you to jump in on this as well, and, and Valerie, I'd like to bring you into this and, and draw in some others in this conversation as well, uh, because now we're almost going into, if we were going from a secular standpoint, we bring the, the book of Beyonce in. If you really want to put a ring on it. I mean, I think that's what she just said. We're, 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 we're doing natural progression now, right? If this is natural progression. Uh, but from a, a, a feminine context, um, is dating and courtship the same from a woman's point of view that it is from a man's point of view? Valerie, why don't you jump in on that? Um, well, it's, it's not. We have two different understanding of what dating and courtship is. Okay, um, now hold on, because now this is very interesting because there was a book, and it was a very popular book, uh, uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Right. And what we're talking about is almost two planetary uh, understandings and languages right now. Because when you hear these brothers talking, I mean, sign me up for the church, of, you know, get ready to find out more and more about who's, who's who, right? I looked at you brothers, you were nodding your head. Is that what we're talking about? But I, I want to push the envelope. And I know we're being a little bit tongue in cheek with this, but I, I'm, I'm saying it's, a, it's a, a very serious subject, but I think that we could use levity in this subject as well. But I'd like to hear a little bit more about that as far as, you know, the differences dating courtship from a feminine perspective and also from a masculine perspective. Well, courtship, you have an understanding that it's leading up to marriage and you have the commitment that you're both committed um, to lead up to marriage and you're committed to um, do and that covenant. But with dating, is like Justin and Mo and the other Justin mentioned is you're testing the waters. You're getting to know people outside of that commitment. Um, you're not really putting the commitment like, oh yeah, let's go on a date and I'll marry you tomorrow. It's more, let's go on a date and I wanna see what you have to offer. But courtship, you're already in the commitment where I'm courting you now, after a certain point, I'm gonna marry you. Um, I think uh, that women are leaning more towards, well, Christian women are leaning more towards courtship, and they should, um, mainly because we're all looking for that commitment that's not out in the secular world. Everybody is um, into that dating, and so let's go on a date. Let's go for coffee, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but it's the commitment level from both perspectives. But like Justin and Mo mentioned, um, the dating part doesn't have the commitment in it. It's, I'm just going to see what you have to offer. And, and Emma Rita, you've seen both sides as far as the dating and the courtship as far as coming in. And uh, I don't know if you can concur with what Valerie is talking about, but. Uh, the reality that, that women are actually looking for more because it, it almost sounds like when I'm listening to the men that there's a fear of buyer's remorse. That, that once I get into this committed relationship that it, you know it's going to change. And I think that every man believes that every woman is uh, going to stay the same when they get married and every woman believes they can change that man. But the reality it just doesn't work that way. I, I'd like to, you know, from, from coming from a dating perspective and now coming to a courting perspective, um, it almost sounds like this is a good thing for men. It, it's it's on, on the masculine side, it's, it's not a bad thing. What do you think about that from a feminine side? I, well, I totally do agree with uh, Valerie's point about dating because I have a lot of girlfriends right now that are very frustrated in the dating world where they go out and the guy 
wants to date, you know, and take it up to a certain level and test the waters and then back out. So they're having a hard time finding a guy who really has, you know, coming in with an honest commitment to let's find out what your hobbies are, what your interests are, and get to know you for real, as opposed to how can I use you for my time and just to go out and have fun, and then next weekend I'll check out Susie and then this person next week, and you know, so it's kind of like they're playing the field. Whereas courtship, the comings of the person's coming with an intention of really getting to know you and just you, as opposed to you and Sarah and, and Jessica. So um, I, I love the courtship perspective, but I think when you choose that courtship perspective, you already have someone in mind and who you want to bring to that level, and it's much more serious. And um, you also know what you're, you know, you're serious about your own life and where you're going and your goals. Whereas when you're dating, you're just kind of just having fun, and you really don't have marriage in mind, and your intention is just not there. So I think the, the difference between courtship and dating is really the intention. Intentionality yeah, yeah. And, and, and purposely moving into that. Mm -hmm. Having dated, like I agree with both women, and I find that the process of dating, because there's no intention, can leave you empty. Because, like she said, or like em Emrita may have mentioned, and I'm not sure if Ali mentioned it too, if you're dating, you're trying it out, if you don't like that person, something that person does, you may dispose of them. You may try and see if there's something better out there. You keep trying to replace that relationship. And each time you do become, let's just say, physical, or even just, not even physical, but emotionally attached to a person, you're creating a soul tie. Which, like, from the Christian perspective, you're drawing, your soul is attached to that person. You're giving a piece of yourself. You're taking a piece of them. And, like, having, like, read in the scriptures, I'm seeing things that I've gone through physically. Now spiritually, I wish I had actually paid attention to those scriptures. You know, what you're talking about here, I think it's, it's very interesting because I think we're pivoting in a couple of areas. And uh, I, I want to bring a couple of other voices into the conversation. Um, what uh, Costantia is, is referring to is that there is uh, actually a recourse that I have when I get into a covenant. And when I get into a courtship, in a dating, I have a limited contract. And, and we're, we're going somewhere, I think, a, a little bit different with this. Um, and I, I want to turn the corner sharply. Um, because if we're not having that relationship, sex is probably as strong. It is the second most powerful drive that we have uh, next to eating our sexuality as well. So I can understand why people will be looking at it and saying, you know what, I, I need to express this part of me because it's a natural part of my, my humanity. Uh, but when you don't have that as an opportunity, what's the outlet that you do? Because if people are getting married less and less and divorce is on the rise and even living together becomes more and more, what is the alternative? Because people are doing something because I, and it's not something that people are just sitting back and sitting at home and, and, and walking around not doing anything. So now we start dealing with how do we deal with this excess energy that we have? And I want to turn the corner uh, because we now see a society that has changed and uh, there's no stigma to pornography and there's no stigma to, to looking at, um, you know, uh, movies of, of pornographic nature, sexual uh, movies. And uh, that means now we're controlling our intimacy and we're, we're choosing to do that. So is, is masturbation the answer then? If we're not, if we're not doing that, what, what, is, what, what are we doing uh, 